Day 24 of the Daily Bible Reading. The reading today was, let's see, it was chapter 19 through 21. Uh, let's see, 19. Um, there's already confusion here. Um, 19 verse 1 states it's in the third month after the departure from the land of Egypt. And um, let me see, I'm, I'm doing this a lot later than when I read it, so I'm going to have to go through, kind of skim through this. Um, let's see. Uh, they're, they're getting ready to, let's see, what was this? I think this, oh, yeah, okay, so this was where they're getting ready to get the Ten Commandments. And, as I told you in the previous chapter, um, let's see, I said it right here. The, what was it, chapter 16, verse 34, that didn't sound right. But one of the previous chapters stated that they had the commandments already, but it was earlier, the second month after leaving Egypt. So I'm not, you know, they, it said they already had the commandments. He put the manna, the urn with the manna near the, the commandments in the, I think it was the ark. But now it's saying the third month and they're finally getting the commandments. So, I mean, there's already confusion from this story. Um, there, the Lord says, you know, get, tell the people, get their clothing washed, don't have sex. Um, I think there was just another sacrifice they had to make. Um, he says, tell them to not, I'm going to come to you on the mountain. The Israelites are not to touch the mountain. If they touch the mountain, they'll have to be put to death. I mean, all this stuff is really weird. Like, what if a baby toddles over there and touches the mountain? Will the baby have to be put to death? I mean, this is just, this is really weird stuff. It's like, why is this even necessary? But then anyways, there's a loud thunder and lightning. Everybody gets scared. They back off anyways. They don't want to touch the mountain. Um, so God didn't have to worry about that. Um, oh, <laughs> the, the way they should be killed is they shouldn't be touched. There's no touching in the way when they, they're killed. I'm going to move this back. This bird is real cute. Let me see. Isn't that cute? That little bird's cute. Um, <laughs> they can't be touched when they're put to death. They have to be stoned to death. Terrible, terrible. I don't even understand how somebody could be stoned to death. Um, but anyways, or killed with arrows. That's so weird and morbid and gross and sociopathic. Um, anyways, okay, so then we're to, to chapter 20. Um, God here says, like, uh, okay, the first chapter, or the first commandment. It depends on how you sort out these commandments as to how many there actually are. Uh, the first commandment, it's, um, you know, God should be first. Um, it also says in this chapter, it says that it includes the no making of idols and no worshiping of idols. And it says here that he'll hand punishment down to the third and fourth generation of the evildoers. It's like, why? They didn't do it. Um... Anyway, so then let's see. Uh, now here, there's one. I'm trying to see if I thought. Okay, two through seventeen is ten commandments. Um, one of the things here that I noticed, uh, verse fourteen in chapter twenty, you shall not commit adultery. It doesn't say men should should not com or women should not commit adultery. It just says you should not commit adultery. Does that include men's 
polygamy, their concubines, and their harems? Is that whoring around? Is that is that whoring around immoral? Because they're doing that regularly in there. Um, let's see. Uh, I'm trying to see. There was another one that I kind of wondered here. On your father and mother. Okay, this one it says in this chapter it doesn't say that children should be put to death. It just says honor your father and mother that you may have a long life. Um, let's see. I thought there was something else that I found weird in here. But I'm not seeing it right now. Um, let's see. Uh, one of the things that uh, bothered me here was chapter 20 verse 20. God uses fear as a bullying tactic. It says here, Moses answered God, do not answer to the people. The people said, we don't want to go anywhere near there. The, it's dark, it's scary, the mountain was trembling. They didn't want to go near um, the mountain. And, and in tw verse 20, Moses said to the people, do not be afraid for God has come to you only to test you and put his fear upon you lest you should sin. That's just downright bullying. Anyways, um, so there's some, they made a celebration. Um, some weird thing about um, they they had to make an altar. It's it said if you make an altar of stone, do not build it of cut stone, for by putting a tool to it you desecrate it. So here's the magic coming in again. You know this magical stone. You can't. You know you can't do any cutting into it because uh, the magic of it will disappear. Um, and then it says something, you shall not go up to steps by steps to my altar. Oh, and which you must not be indecently uncovered. I don't, I don't really even get that. Whatever, whatever. Anyways, chapter 21, problematic verses. Here's more of the commandments. Okay. Now, when you purchase a Hebrew slave, and I had to look this up, is that the same as Jewish? And apparently, yes, it is. So this would be the Israelites. He is to serve you for six years, but in the seventh year, he shall be given freedom. So again, this is condoning slavery. Um... If he comes in alone, meaning unmarried, without kids, he should leave alone. If he comes in with his wife, his wife shall leave with him. I'm wondering, like, what if the wife, you know, what if they have kids? Would the kids be able to go, or was it just his wife would be able to go? Uh, verse 4, but if his master gives him a wife and she bears him sons or daughters, the woman and her children... Okay, so this one's problematic right off the start. If the master gives him a wife, does he has, have a right to refuse? The woman most likely doesn't. The woman never has a right to choose. So I'm assuming the woman would not. So in other words, this is rape. Um, again, condoned. But his master gives him a wife, and she bears him sons or daughters. The woman and her children shall... Remain the master's property. So he, she's the master's property from forever. Once she gets into slavery, she never gets out of slavery. Um, and the children, same thing. Shall remain the master's property and the man shall leave alone. If, however, the slave declares, I am devoted to my master and my wife and children, I will not go free. His master shall bring him his master shall bring him to God, and there at the door or doorpost he shall pierce his ear with an awl, and thus keep him as a slave forever. I don't understand this. His master shall bring him to God. Oh, it does says um, to the sanctuary. Uh, may They're thinking that maybe that means to the judges, like the judges that Moses put in to govern. A couple cha few chapters ago, so maybe that's what it is. Um, but anyways, that's a way that the slave owner gets to trick his slave into staying. Like the women are slaves forever; they can't they can't leave. Um, 
you know, there's no law saying they can leave. The only way they can leave is if the master, if their owner um, allows them to leave. And why would, why would an owner allow a woman to leave? Why would an owner allow any slave to, to go free unless he has to, you know? But anyways, that's a way to trick them into saying, you know, give him a wife and, you know, the only way he can leave is if he agrees to leave his wife and any of the children they have behind. And, you know, would, would somebody want to do that? You know, probably depends on how poorly he's treated. But, I mean, then he could just treat them well until that um, seven years is up, or what is it, six years? Six years is up. And then, you know, you can say, oh, well, you've treated me so well, and i got a wife and kids, it's worth it for me to stay. And then, you know, then from then on, you can treat them like crap. That, that's a way you can, two ways you could trick them. Now, here you get a, a man that sells his daughter to a slave. She, not, she shall not go free as the male slaves. Sarah specifically says that. But if her master, who had destined her for himself, what do you think that means? Dislikes her, he shall let her be redeemed. I'm thinking being redeemed means sending back to the parents' house. But who would want a daughter? A daughter is only a woman. A woman's disrespected in all ways in this culture. As prescribed in the Bible, we don't know if this is actually how this stuff went down back then. Or if this is all just made up crap. I mean, we know the stories are made up crap, but like, is the cultural references, are they accurate? I don't know. But according to this book, women are crap. You know, women are property. They're no, they're not treated any more, better than cattle. And, um, so anyways, um, so why would the parents want, or the father, it would be the father's decision, why would the father want her back? I mean, this is how female genocide happens. There, there's a word for female genocide, for female, killing of females, I don't remember what the word is. But, um, anyways, um, in other words, he can rape her. She, he, her father sells his daughter to be raped by her owner, and her owner can rape her as much as she wants, and she can never leave. Um, <coughs> he has no right to sell her to a foreigner, but he can sell her to other Hebrews, other Israelites. Um, if he destines, like, if he destines her for his son, so this could be family rape, like, he could, you know, he could, he could rape her all he wants and then give her his son to, his son to rape. And then he should, he should treat her like a daughter. How do you treat someone like a daughter if you've had sex with them? Imagine that. Um, if he takes another wife, he shall not... And, and, okay, we just got this done with this do not commit adultery in the previous chapter. And now we're saying if he takes another wife. What the hell? So is this, uh, is this adultery only for women? Men can whore around all they want, but women have to stay faithful. Okay, if he takes another wife, he shall not withhold her food, her clothing, or her conjugal rights. Because she still wants to have sex with him as a slave. Um, in other words, it's not talking about the new woman he takes. He's talking about the, the previous wife, you know, his other wife. He can't withhold food, clothing, or anything from her. If he does not grant her these three things, she shall be given her freedom absolutely without cost to her. And guess who the judges are? Males. So who's going to rule in her favor? So he gives her one article of clothing every ten years. Well, I gave her an article of clothing. You know, I heard this on, what was it, Snap Judgment or The Moth or This American Life recently. You can't get goose justice in a fox courthouse. And that's what this is, you know, a fox courthouse, a goose trying to get justice in a fox courthouse. Okay, and now it, t now it talks more problematic. It talks about, you know, the son's personal injury. Whoever strikes a man with a fatal blow should be put to death. Um, if it's an accident, then he shall be free to a place. They call them city of refuges. If it was an accidental death, he could run to a place which was set apart, especially for these escapees. Um, 
Now, uh, whoever strikes his father or mother shall be put to death. Pretty, pretty backwards, don't you think? Um, especially considering the, the parents can beat the kids half to death. You know, but if the child strikes back, and it doesn't say age of child, so is this even grown adults? I mean, this is just ridiculous. So, your parents can beat you half to death, and you you do any fight back, you strike back to get them to stop or calm them down, you get put to death. Um, a kidnapper should be put to death. Whoever even curses her, his father or mother shall be put to death. Does that mean behind their back? Like, what if somebody overhears him, you know, he's cussing out his parents, or she's cussing out her parents, um, walking away, and somebody overhears her doing that, even if the parents didn't hear her? Does that, is that included? That's ridiculous. Um, let's see. Uh... Oh, and then here comes the differences between slave because slaves are the property. Um, let's see. Verse 20, when a man strikes his male or female slave with a rod so hard that the slave dies under his hand, he shall be punished. If forever, however, the slave survives for a day or two, he is not to be punished since the slave is his own property. In other words, this is his, this is his chattel. Um... If, if it can be, what it's trying, what they're trying to say here is, if beating them could be linked as a direct result to their death. Um, because it would be within a day or two of the beating. Then the, um... He shall be punished, not put to death. It just says punished. What's punishment? Right? Um, that's not death. So anyways, the owner should be put to death only if the slave dies right away. If the, day, if the slave lives an extra day or two, um, there's no direct link from the... Um, they're trying to say there's no direct link from the beating to the death. So the person gets to, the owner has absolutely no punishment because that is his property. That human is his property. Um, even though you know doggone well, that that death was caused because of that beating. Right? This is how slave owners get away with their nonsense. If they, if the, if basically, if the slave doesn't die during the beating, the slave owner goes away unpunished, and even if the slave does die, he just gets punished. Just a broad term. What, what does he get punished with? What? One of his sheep get taken away? I, I, you know, I mean, this is just absolute sickening. Um, here, uh, let's see, when men have a fight and hurt a pregnant woman, so she suffers a miscarriage, but no further injury, the woman's the guilty one shall be fined, fined, not murdered, because he's a man injuring a woman. Doesn't matter, she's just a woman. Um, and if he she and if he beats her hard enough to miscarry, he's done a lot of damage to her. Okay, she's probably got bruises and cuts and maybe brain damage. But she's just a woman, so the man doesn't get put to death like as in chapter 12. Whoever strikes a man a mortal blow must be put to death. But if a man strikes a woman, beats a woman so hard that she miscarries, guess what his, what his penalty is? Um, the guilty one should be fined as much as the woman's husband demands of him. And he shall pay in the presence of the judges. That's it. But if injury ensues, you shall give life for life, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, foot for foot, whatever, whatever. Um, so what does that mean? That's such broad, that, that's ambiguous. What does that even mean? 
Um, but if injury ensues, she's already been injured. She's miscarried. He's beaten her so hard she's miscarried. She's already obviously having bruises. So what, you know, what What do you mean further in, if injury ensues? She's already, you know, this is just obviously written by man. Um, let's see. Uh, if a man strikes, if a man strikes his male or female slave and the eye and destroys the use of eye or tooth, you should let the save slave go free for that. But wait a minute. Just a few verses ago, it, it's the only thing for killing a slave during beating was um, nothing. Um, but if he ruins an eye or a tooth, the slave goes free? What? So if you're going to beat him hard enough to injure the eye or tooth, you might as well kill him. In other words, this is encouraging people to kill their slaves. Um, the ox talks about the ox goring and needing to be like if I'm let's see I think my partner's home so I think I'm going to end this because I'm at the end anyways of chapter 21 yeah it's just talking about oxen and you know livestock basically if they hurt if they hurt so you know if they gore somebody and they die then the ox has to be put to death and but if it was a repeated thing and the owner didn't make sure that the ox was put, I don't know. It just it kind of all doesn't make sense. Mm. Anyway, so that's that's it for that. Um, this is January 24th, 2021. I'm a little birdie here. Doo -doo, one of the little bucks. Got a little, little hidey spot there. I had put some coins in there. I put this together. I thought it looked kind of cute. So, anyways, if you're interested in anything I put on here on the camera, just put in the comments. Everything's for sale. Okay, bye.